Okay, uh, you mentioned that uh, Grandma would try to keep the peace between Dad and Ross, a uh, Rod and uh, Leo and Les. Leo and Les. Tell me about that, because. <laughs> Well, Leo was the boss after Dad died. Because Fred was gone. Fred and Myrtle were both married and had kids. Uh, so Les decided, I'm not going to do this, Leo, and he packed up and went up to Montana. After a while, I, I don't know how long he was gone. There, there was a, the snow melt off, came down through uh, Thornton and flooded. You couldn't see the bridge. Wow. We had to drive down there and, and see this. I'm a little kid. Uh, we're looking at this block wide river lake and there were logs floating down so I mother wrote a letter to Liz to tell all about it and I stuck in my little one second grade maybe I and so I wrote and there were logs floating down the river blah 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 and he wrote back and said Ada said that there were legs floating down so my <laughs> He misconstrued my spell. <laughs> <laughs> so he got a kick out of, and of course I got rasped about that for a long time. And I thought, I will never write again. And I still hate writing letters. <laughs> I go back through and make sure that there are no legs floating <laughs> in my correspondence. <clears throat> what would you like? Um like my children and my grandchildren, what would you like them to uh, to know about Dad and and your family? Uh, what what kinds of things do you think would be something? Well, that... he was always uh, a good runner. Did I finish the story oh, about? Oh, I I interrupted you about the railroad track for breaking his leg. I interrupted you. Go ahead with and that. And also about Fudge. Didn't know about that. Okay. The railroad track, uh, breaking his leg, uh, Will Harris brought him home, and I, and I don't remember the outcome of that. But the minute Mother would head for town to go to work in the seat house, Ross and Rod would get out the sugar and the cocoa and the vanilla and make fudge. It was delicious. <laughs> the four of us would eat that up, clean up every scrap of that. When mother would come home, you couldn't even smell any fudge. <laughs> She's in town slaving to buy sugar for oh. the family. Oh, we're home eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what we laughed about the other day. It might be. I think it is, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Is there that's, lots of love in your family? Uh, I think we were all so darn busy that I don't know. I really don't know, other than that. There wasn't much time to sit down and just say, how are you doing? No, I don't think so. Times were tough. Oh yes, but everybody else was in the same fix, so you didn't know it was right. tough. Right. Okay. I know I went out one, one summer when they were thinning the beets and this time Bonnie was thinning for once. We we were thinning on 
the field that's west of where Fred's house is. It ran from the Salem Street down to almost the river. As it got closer to the river, the ground wasn't good enough for beets, but those rows were long. And on this day, I decided, Bonnie is weeding, uh, thinning beets today. I'm going to keep up with her. I said, come on, Hazel, let's keep up with her. And Hazel was smarter. <laughs> After all, we got about nine cents a row. Wow. <laughs> uh, I chopped those things as fast as I could, and I was keeping up with her. And finally, I thought, this isn't fun. So I quit and let Hazel catch up with me. 